I consider two variations in the hard nucleus. That is the dense lens, which is quite common, and then also the very dense brunescent lens. The lens fibers are arranged radially, resulting in the Y suture lines that we see sculpting down through the nucleus. These fault lines are used to fracture the lens with instruments deep within the nucleus. So we have radial orientation of fibers and then the layers of fibers added throughout life that create the lamellar zones as well as the radial fault lines through which we can fracture using the divide and conquer technique. Now this animation of the surgeon's view will illustrate the crater divide and conquer nucleofractus technique for dense brunescent nuclei. After central sculpting, the nuclear rim is divided into multiple sections, and then each section is brought to the center for emulsification. This very dense brunescent lens with light perception vision only, no red reflex, will illustrate these techniques. This case requires 8.4 minutes of phaco time, but only 2.85 minutes of accumulated energy, indicating about 30% average power used. Note the rotation of the lens, which is facilitated by adequate hydrodissection. To remove the central part of the nucleus, and to note that the sculpting is done in the upper part of the lens, ending the sculpting stroke just past the center of the nucleus. The second instrument is used to nudge the nucleus inferiorly to accomplish this downslope sculpting, as I speak of it, because the sculpting here in the upper part of the lens allows the travel of the phaco tip to be parallel to the slope of the posterior capsule. And that's a concave slope, so it's like sculpting down the slope of the posterior capsule. We're going to show this now two times normal speed so that you can see the entire case in the time allotted. We are trying to thin the posterior portion of the nucleus to try to get rid of the posterior plate of the nucleus to facilitate fracturing the nuclear rim. If the plate is not removed entirely, the fracturing cannot be complete to the central part of the nucleus. see the necessity of the second instrument to rotate and stabilize the nucleus as well as to fracture it. A 30 degree tip is used which has less chance of going through the nuclear rim here and puncturing the capsule. You see that a cross-action technique of fracturing is utilized in these very dense nuclear rim cases. And also a little notch is created in the nuclear rim so that the spatula has something to push against. Notice the high magnification used in this case. The higher the magnification, the greater the stereoscopic separation.
without a pink fundus reflex, it's also helpful to dim the room lights and to use high illumination on the surgical microscope. Surgeon control of the phaco power is helpful to use a minimal amount of power, just a short burst to engage this section of the nuclear rim. Many small segments were fractured because a large segment, a quarter of the lens, would create too much bulk to rotate the segment into the center. So the more dense the lens, the more segments should be created for safety. Notice how they're brought to the center of the pupil for the emulsification, and then at low power settings, just sufficient to emulsify without bouncing the tip away from the port. Flow rate of about 23 cc's a minute, or even lower at about 18, works well for this stage of the operation. And as we uh, conclude the case, we realize the advantage of phaco emulsification and even the very dense burnescent nucleus, where the intact continuous curvilinear capsule rexus has been maintained for in the bag placement of the implant, and this dense lens has been removed through a small incision.